I spent a week alone in the metaverse. I always wanted to do an intro like that. I saw a tweet last week that said, the metaverse is not just dead, it never existed. Citibank valued the metaverse at $13 trillion, but Facebook's metaverse platform had only 38 users and only gained $470 in revenue. So I thought I'd investigate. And what I found was shocking. Spoiler alert, there's definitely more than 38 users, but not so much more to justify the $36 billion Mark Zuckerberg has invested in the metaverse. By the way, the metaverse, if you've heard the word but don't really know the meaning is just an aspirational word for a version of reality that only exists online. We've actually had the metaverse for a while. Second life comes to mind. I think dogs should vote. Or more recently, VR chat, which is much more popular than the metaverse that I spent a weekend. The one created by Facebook. I'm looking at you, Mark. Facebook's version of the metaverse is called Meta Horizon Worlds, which is a terrible name. Fitting, for a terrible game. When you Google Horizon Worlds, you get a little box that says, is Horizon Worlds still available? Horrible question to have people asking about your game. What do you do in Horizon Worlds? Great question, I'll be answering this today. Why did Horizon Worlds fail? A question in the past tense. <laughs> this is a bad sign, Mark Zuckerberg. So I wanted to get to the bottom of this, and I did. Over the last week, I've been strapping on my uncomfortable VR headset and living out my days in Meta Horizon World. I exercised, I socialized. Hey, you shut up, mind your business. Yeah, shut the f up, bro. And I went to a lot of empty places. This is my story. I charged my headset the night before with the goal of being able to jump feet first into the metaverse the next morning. But instead, I had to jump feet first into a lot of software updates. In the nearly three years since I last turned on my VR headset, Facebook renamed themselves to Meta to signify their long-term goal of building the metaverse. And they renamed everything, including Oculus, the actual brand of my headset. I wasn't expecting to have to do so much setup for a headset that I've owned and used for years, but it was time to shed my old Oculus identity and create a new Meta identity. Uh, but basically I just had to do a bunch of forms. In the metaverse. I decided on the name Friendly Jarvis because I wanted people in the metaverse to know that I am both friendly and Jarvis. And I look like this because I picked the default avatar that looked the most like me and I don't know how to change it. But metaverse Jarvis is way better than original Jarvis because in the metaverse you can be anyone. So I became someone with a big square jaw. Before I launched Horizon Worlds, I had to download it. And first of all, it's rated for teens. Then why do I look like a 35 year old man? Whether or not this app should be for teens is something we will discuss, but not a single one of these avatars looks like a teen. Meta Horizon Worlds is a social experience where you can interact with real people in real time. There are rules everyone must follow. Why is this the second thing you say about the app? Here's the loading screen you see when you launch Horizon Worlds. It's aspirational to say the least because this is not what Horizon Worlds actually looks like. Horizon Worlds looks like shit. Look, I'm not a graphics guy. I'm usually not gonna be the person complaining about the graphics of a game. But what on earth is this? Mark Zuckerberg allegedly invested $36 billion into the metaverse, and this is what we get. It's giving Wii Sports, except in Wii Sports, you have legs. I don't know at what point the team at Meta decided that leg technology was outside the scope of their project. It's clearly a decision they made on purpose because walking has been in video games since Pac-Man took his first steps. And if you don't think Pac-Man has legs, look closer. Instead of walking, you just slide around with a floating torso. It's very unnerving. Ooh, it's kind of making me making me lightheaded. There's a lot of default settings that didn't make sense to me at the beginning of the tutorial. Like the movement feels super stiff and I kept getting this weird tunnel vision whenever I walked around. So I changed the settings to feel more fluid and set off to complete the tutorial. There is honestly not much to the tutorial at all. It feels like you're in an abandoned carnival which is foreshadowing for the whole vibe of Horizon Worlds. I shot some balls and did some other janky mini games in VR. Uh, which Horizon Worlds is filled with. It's filled to the brim with janky mini games and balls. So a few minutes into the tutorial, I realized why there were so many weird movement options. It's because moving in a natural way can make some people sick. And it turns out that I am some people. At this point, I had a full week in VR ahead of me and I was pretty nervous because I got nauseous immediately. So I bought every type of drama meme that they sell and I got back into the verse. That's right, I'm calling it the verse. 
But before we get into that, me and my son here have to talk about today's sponsor, Pokemon Sleep. Pokemon Sleep is essentially a super fun way to track your sleep and learn about healthy sleeping habits while also training and collecting Pokemon. In Pokemon Sleep, you're working with Professor Neroli, who is essentially a Pokemon sleeping habits researcher, and he's doing research on these islands that are home to a bunch of Snorlax. And the Snorlax have the mysterious ability to make Pokemon drowsy around them. Not drowsy the Pokemon, but like tired. He's created this device that combines your sleeping habits with Snorlax's sleeping habits and multiplies Snorlax's drowsy power, it's called. It makes more Pokemon fall asleep on the island. And when you wake up, there's a bunch of new Pokemon sleeping around Snorlax that you can befriend. You'll also get statistics about your sleep and how much you're dozing, snoozing, and slumbering. So you can rest your very best. I don't know about you, but I personally am a snoozer. There's over 110 Pokemon, each with three unique sleeping styles for you to complete your sleep decks. I'm sure you all know how much I love Pokemon and how it's been a huge part of my life since I was a little kid. So I'm extremely excited and honored to partner with Pokemon Sleep for this video. I think it's a super fun way to get excited about having a good night's rest. Go ahead and click the links in the description to download the Pokemon Sleep app, which is available on both the Google Play and iOS app stores. Once again, a huge thanks to Pokemon Sleep for sponsoring this video. Now back to the metaverse. At the end of the tutorial, you're offered three paths. Much like when you graduate high school and need to figure out what you're doing with your life, do you want to pursue adventure, action, or comedy? I remember when I got my high school diploma and I went around telling everybody that I was going to college to study adventure. Maybe this is obvious to say, but action and adventure are very similar things. Uh, oftentimes, like in movies, action and adventure are grouped together as one thing, but not in the metaverse. In the metaverse, they are 66% of options. But being a silly, goofy guy, I chose comedy. Something interesting to me about these worlds that I was being sent to post-tutorial is that Meta did not create these worlds. The comedy world, the Soapstone Comedy Club, was created by someone named Unemployed Alcoholic. And there's just something that isn't adding up about this whole it's for teens thing, but we'll come back to that later. Get off the stage! As soon as I landed in the comedy club world, I began hearing the voices of people around me, oh, my son still which is, is called proximity so chat for those familiar. And it's how basically all the worlds in the metaverse work. Anyway, before I could actually listen to any of the comedy, my p power went out and my computer died. So I figured that was a good sign to stop day one. So it's day two and I loaded up my Oculus and put it on, which hurts because I have way too much hair to be doing this. When you first come back online to Horizon Worlds, you're in this weird liminal space island with a menu and a full length mirror. There's a lot of mirrors in the metaverse, by the way, and it never ceases to freak me out. Also, am I darker to you? I definitely feel like I got a tan. From the menu, I clicked the home button, which I haven't pressed yet, and I went to a house that I've been told is my house. You're apparently given a fully furnished home in the metaverse, and it was never explained. You just get dropped here like a protagonist who lost his memories. Personally, I would have preferred to start with an empty house so that I could furnish myself. That way I identify with the space. I get to have some input into the way it looks. Uh, because at one point I walked into a door by accident and got scared because I didn't know where I was. Thankfully, there was a sign on the door to remind me that this is my house. <laughs> Uh, if you look up from your balcony, you can see a blimp that has my name on it. Definitely don't remember putting that up there, but my apologies to the neighborhood for any blimp-based disturbances. If you're wondering if everyone gets the same house, yep. In the metaverse, we all have identical homes, which is actually kind of sweet because it reminds me of Black Mirror, which is a show that I like about how cool technology is. Now's an important time to mention that I've been jacking into the metaverse in the mornings, treating this like my nine to five job, but I'm definitely the only person doing this because the only other people on the metaverse at 10 a.m. are children. How do I know? Well, the comedy club has been overrun by preteens. I'm having a, here, come here, come here. I, have to I'm right now. I'm right now. <laughs> I shouldn't know anyone's age, but right as I walked in, a kid said, how did you know I was 10? And his name was Baby Shark 2013. The slurs and offensive jokes reminded me of a middle school cafeteria, but hey, I'm just a guest here. So I sat my ass down and listened, metaphorically speaking, because I don't have an ass or legs. Oh, Actually, wait, yeah. I know a joke. <laughs> Women's rights. <laughs> ah. 
Ah. Ah. I was at the comedy club for a while, and that is the only joke that I can share that will not get my account deleted. Uh, there was also a notice at the front of the club that said no vulgar profanity, graphic sexual topics, no racial, homophobic, or other derogatory jokes. Uh, but I'm thinking since these kids are still learning to read, they thought that was a checklist. <laughs> Not that there's a rule about this, but someone insulted my jawline. Your forehead is literally bigger, what? the biggest joke, you and your jawline. You know, people are always saying that kids are soft and they wouldn't survive a cod lobby back in the day, but... I don't know, because I barely survived the Soapstone Comedy Club at 10 a.m. They ask you how you are, and you just have to say that you're fine. So after getting my feelings hurt, I decided I would go try to do something relaxing. I saw there was a bowling world with a whopping five people online. So how bad could that be? The first thing I see in the bowling world is a guy with a little male pattern baldness going on. Again, these avatars are 35. But hey, nothing wrong with that. Love to see that he's rocking it. Um, he's got his hands in an odd position, but maybe that's just how you bowl in the meta. <laughs> Upon closer inspection, this is an actual infant. Sure. How did a baby get in the metaverse. But kudos to this baby, by the way, for being so sick at bowling, because I couldn't figure it out. On my way out, I saw a girl dancing in front of a giant phone. So I was just curious. So I asked what was up and she said, um, I'm just doing a TikTok. Can I do it with me? Oh God, another child. <laughs> I've got to get out of this bowling alley. No, you go first. I did the TikTok. I did the TikTok and let me tell you why. There is a certain responsibility I have as an adult to not crush the dreams of a child at 11 a.m. So I danced. Also, I have to say, the metaverse was only open to teens in April of this year. I am not seeking out child spaces. They probably let kids in because all the adults got bored with this stupid game, but now it's Lord of the Flies. I took off my headset and I called a friend. I'm so lonely. So far, it's been hard to find anyone my age to talk to in the verse, but I'm not leaving my house until this week is done. Hey, what's up? Hey, I've been kind of lonely this week. I was wondering if you'd be down to go to a bar or like bowling sometime. Ooh, I think I might be busy that day. Um, no, I, I didn't say a day. So maybe you just misheard what I was, um. Day three, I was on a mission to find more adults, but I instinctively went to the comedy club because I guess it's my routine now. And to my surprise, there were adults there. But to my dismay, they were having the most boring conversation of all time. I think I walked into some sort of panel about having a business in the metaverse or something. I missed the beginning and just heard people saying buzzwords about business. But people seemed engaged. I mean, as much as I could tell, there's no sitting down in the metaverse. So we're all just kind of floating in the direction of the speakers. They were taking questions from the audience and they even put chairs on the stage. I'd like to see you do that in the real world. The panel may have been boring, but it was my first time finding real adults in the metaverse. And I'll be honest, I was hooked. But how could I find more adults? You'd think there would be worlds that were marked for all ages and ones marked for adults. But while Meta has implemented features to protect children from adults, there were no tools to protect me from children. I even went to a jail simulator and it was full of kids. Yo, can someone tell? Yo, who has a gun? I've had enough. Against my better judgment, I searched 18 plus in the search bar and thankfully nothing weird happened. Searching for 18 plus showed me the community world created for me, an adult man. My options were plenty. You've got bars, you've got clubs, and you've got the welcome lounge, whatever the hell that means. These people are creeping me out. So let's go to Gatsby's bar. I just mentioned that there's no tools to protect adults from children. So you're probably wondering how these 18 plus worlds keep them out. And the answer is they don't. There's nothing stopping a child from entering most of these bars, except they'll probably be ridiculed if they speak. Gatsby's bar does something different though. They've innovated new anti-child technology, a child lock, if you will. When you enter the world, you're dropped into a holding cell and you're told to grab a rod with both hands and stretch your arms as far as possible. If someone's arm span is more than 4.9 feet, as most adults have a longer arm span than 4.9 feet, you'll be able to get in. 
if you were a kid, you won't be able to get in. I'm not sure how well this could possibly work because what about the short kings, Gatsby? What about the tall teens? I'm 26. Gatsby's bar is fitted with an outdoor patio area, which I enjoy at real bars, so I felt at home. The game told me that there were five people in the bar, but I could only find two of them, the basketball boys. You're really friendly, Jarvis. Hanging out at Gatsby's very own basketball court, where you can shoot hoops and even check the leaderboards for top scorers. I asked the basketball boys if they enjoy Horizon Worlds, and they said yes. And then I asked them what other worlds they like to go to, and they said, just here. Then my man Slim told me he cracked the top 10 on the scoreboard for basketball, and that he's been playing this nonstop for the last three days. It's been a grind. <laughs> yeah. Somebody's got 2,300 shots. I cannot believe that. You made 709? In the last three days, dude. Gatsby's was pretty empty beside the boys, so I asked them if it's always like this, and they told me that it really picks up in a few hours, so I told them that I'd be back later and continued on my quest to find adults. I went to a dance club that was so empty that there were literally crickets, but that just meant I had the jacuzzi all to myself. Then I practiced my DJ set. This one's for all the sexy ladies. Also, they had basketball, like every world, for some reason. Then I went to a senior center called the Thrive Pavilion. Their goal is to combat loneliness amongst older adults, which is very noble, but it was empty when I arrived and that made me lonely. I did notice that they were having a book club later this week on a book that I just so happened to have read. I read it in high school and I remember no details other than the title, but maybe this would finally be my chance to make some friends. Or will that be tonight? Cause the sun has fallen and it's time to get ballin'. By which I mean, go back to Gatsby's bar and see if it's popping. And it was, my basketball boys were gone, but there were 26 people here, which by horizon world standards is Madison Square Garden. It was here at 9 PM that I realized VR isn't that advanced at a lot of things. I couldn't pick up a bowling ball earlier. I couldn't shoot the basketball earlier. Honestly, I just have trouble with balls, I guess. But what Mark Zuckerberg's Meta Horizon Worlds was perfect at was emulating the social anxiety I feel when I don't belong. <laughs> have you ever tried joining a conversation, but you're just standing right outside the circle to not be rude? You can do that in VR. And that is why technology is amazing. Everyone seemed to already have friends and I don't know how they did it. It felt like high school, but I had just moved here from out of town. They seem to be having fun though. For a split second, I thought I had actually made a friend because me and this girl started throwing this little ball at each other. VR is mostly balls. But then with no warning, she left me to go into the water. And then without realizing my mic was unmuted, I said, man, my only friend left me. And then she audibly said, aww, and started walking back. At which point I was so embarrassed that I teleported home. It's been half a week in the metaverse and there's no one here. Like there's people, but it's abandoned. You know what I mean? According to Facebook, there are 200,000 monthly users of Horizon Worlds. So where are they? I think Facebook is being misleading with the numbers here. They've done it before. Like I'm sure there's some factual, technically correct justification for 200,000 monthly users. But when you really get down to it, it's just slim playing basketball. I looked at the top 20 featured worlds of the day yesterday and I added up all of the active users. I did this in my head for some reason. I could have just used a calculator. Uh, uh, 153 plus 142, 196, 196, 200, 210, uh, 864. Wrong, but close. It's 903 or something like that. But this isn't the only creative lie that Zuck has told us. You'll recall that there are inexplicably no legs in Horizon Worlds. And this at the time created a bunch of controversy. Just kidding, no one cared, but it's fun to dunk on Zuck. Then in October, 2022, he does this grand reveal of legs in Horizon World and he's uh, jumping around acting a whole damn fool. Legs! I, I know you've been waiting for this. I don't know how to fucking do it, Mark Zuckerberg. Everyone's been waiting for this, said Zuckerberg. But seriously, legs are hard. That's why other virtual reality systems don't have them either. And a few days later, it comes out that it wasn't fucking real. I know what he's saying. He's saying that tracking legs for real in VR is difficult without the thing that Dean had in community. Jesus, what? But nobody's asking for that, okay? They just don't want to be floating chests. What else, what else? Uh, 
Everyone knows each other, that's weird, but I guess there's so few users that it's basically like a large high school where you see the same faces everywhere, especially since there's so few adults. Get off the stage! Even in Meta Horizon workrooms, which is like Zoom, but metaverse, everyone's disembodied torsos are floating above their chairs. I'm going to lose it. Part of the appeal of something like VR chat is the complete disregard for intellectual property law. One day you can be having a heartfelt conversation with Kermit the Frog about bullying. So I had always like felt a little different and stuff. And the next day get called the no-no word by Pickle Rick. <laughs> I get it though, using other people's famous brands can bring big fun and excitement to your game. Just look at Fortnite, who like officially partners with everyone from Rick and Morty to Ariana Grande. But Meta, one of the largest companies in the world, investing over 400 times the average AAA game budget, they've got Wendy's. Wendy's is the only corporate partner of the metaverse, and they too have an empty metaverse world. The Wendyverse, verse, verse. This was a promotion from April 2022, and it's now July 2023, and it's still there. I have no idea what they were going for, but to their credit, it does look like a Wendy's. There was even a free nugget promotion for going to their website that didn't work. After going to the official Wendy's of the metaverse, I was curious what other brands were there unofficially. So naturally I searched McDonald's and there it was. Pretty similar to the Wendy's experience to be honest, but I couldn't pick up the burger. So I threw a fit. I also searched Disney and it turns out someone has made a one-to-one -one Disneyland in the metaverse that they call Disneyland VR parody, which is a legal life hack for not getting sued. This is Disneyland the parody park. Notice how I say parody park because we are not Disneyland. We have nothing to do with Disneyland. And Disneyland did not build this. I built this completely on my own. The world itself was very impressive, but unfortunately very boring. Coming up on our left hand side, you're going to notice a Siberian tiger, which is an animal known for jumping over 20 feet to catch its prey. We're going to be about 15 feet away from it, which means guys, no worries. If it lunges at us, it's going to go right over your head. Yeah, a lot like that joke did. Moving on. <laughs> My brain has been broken by the internet because the next thing I searched was family guy. It was horrifying. Ah, there was one other person there and when I wasn't paying attention, they put Stewie in the sink and started washing his mouth out with soap. So I don't know what that was about. On the fifth day, I ended up in this world called VR Bank and I had no clue how I got there or what was going on. It seemed like there was a bank robbery going on. How old are you? But bank tellers were just working as normal. Anyway, there were a bunch of portals to other worlds outside the bank. And the one that caught my eye was VR Dollar Tree. So I tried to go grocery shopping in the metaverse, but as soon as I landed in the world, it told me that I have zero paycheck, <laughs> which is insulting and true. I asked the cashier how to get money and he pointed me to the ATM, which coincidentally teleported me back to the bank. I never did figure out how to buy those bananas, but when I teleported back to the bank, there were a bunch of kids surrounding someone. So I got a little bit closer and lo and behold, it was the world creator, the person who made this bank, which you could tell by this badge they put on his name. His name is See Me Bro, and he has made so many worlds in Horizon Worlds, including that Dollar Tree and a bunch of other worlds that I cut out of this video for time. <laughs> but perhaps most importantly, he was the creator of the club where I danced alone. And I'll always respect him for that. Anyway, I tried to ask him some questions and he seemed very eager to answer them. My theory is because I'm the only adult voice he's heard in years. <laughs> Genuinely, when I was trying to ask him questions, kids were just accosting him nonstop. So are you new to uh, here? Come on in the You're bean, just... come on. Wait, what? I'm talking home. He was a super sweet guy to give me the time and explain to me that he's a member of Meta's partner program and he develops worlds as his full-time job, which is insane to me considering Meta allegedly only had $470 in creator donations last month. So they must be paying these people on the side. I couldn't spend too much time interviewing this guy because it was time for book club. 
And when I arrived at the senior center, there were actually people there, which made me nervous. I know I'm a creator and stuff, but I'm actually quite introverted when I'm in unfamiliar territory. There's so few regular users that whenever there's a new guy, they stick out like a sore thumb. That's me, I'm the sore thumb. As soon as I got there, the creator of the world kindly welcomed me and asked me if I was here for book club. Hey, Jarvis, hello. Water are you here for uh, are you here for the book club? Then he started asking me when I read the book, and I didn't have the heart to tell him that I read it in high school and was just here for adult friends. Hello. We Hi, see Pat. Pat and Hi. Diana. Yes. Hey. Everyone was really nice, but I still felt uncomfortable because that's who I am. That being said, I think that this is a really cool nonprofit. My aunt used to be the activity director for a nursing home, and I spent a lot of my childhood at nursing homes, hanging out with the seniors. So having activities and ways to combat loneliness and boredom are awesome. Uh, anyway, Barbara got stuck in the pool. Bob, how did Hello. she get out of the pool? Uh, well, it's a couple ways. Uh, so I left. <laughs> I think maybe I don't know how to socialize, but socializing is what the metaverse is all about. Maybe I just need to calm my nerves, have myself a virtual beverage, and engage in some small talk not about a book I read in high school. When I first searched for 18 plus worlds, the most popular world was called Scenic Bar, but it had 30 people in it, which at the time was a scary number since it's so big. But now I think it's time. The layout of Scenic Bar is as you'd expect. It's a bar with a scenic view of a waterfall. You can even go up this mountain and ride a zip line down, which if you ask me is a big step up from basketball. Literally, it's a big step up from basketball because there was also a basketball game there. Are you crazy? <laughs> I walked through the bar and the bar opens out into this nice outdoor area where everybody's broken off into their little conversations. I saw a group of people talking and I did my patented move of silently joining their conversation without saying anything. This group of gentlemen were discussing old British comedians from their youth. Eight out of 10 cats does count down carrot in a box. Carrot in a box. I mean, that, that, that shows the full genius of Sean Lott. Uh, right. I was just smiling and nodding with my mic off uh, until they noticed me. I wish that I could just be a fly on the wall and not be seen. <laughs> you know what happens to flies <laughs> on the wall? Yeah, they get squatted. No, no, you get you get killed by yeah. the Karate Kid. Oh, shy. You're, mute, you're muted, mate. Yeah. No, he's, yeah. he's shy. Oh, my mic wasn't on. Whoops, that wasn't on purpose at all. Then I booked it for the zip line. I'm starting to learn that if you have an activity to do you can avoid interacting with people. So that's what I was trying to do with the zip line. But on my way up the ladders, I ran into another group of people having an intimate personal conversation. I'm 32 years old. I need to settle down, start thinking about having kids. That I should not be listening to. But also, I'm nosy, so I stopped the eavesdrop for just a little. <laughs> but then this woman looked at me directly and said, can I help you? Can I help you? And so I went home. That's enough VR for the day, but we are now nearing the end of the week. Horizon World's most active day is upon us, Saturday. Saturday morning, I woke up, ate breakfast, and invited my friend Sam over so she could help me eat and drink while I have this headset on. The first world I saw when I booted into Horizon was one that I have never seen before. Metacourt. Metacourt is maybe one of my favorite experiences in VR because it involves kids being creative and not saying slurs. It appears to be a role-playing world for the court system, and people take turns holding the roles of judge, jury, plaintiff, defendant. You've seen court TV before. I and I have know me. reached my verdict. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what? This is basically that, but in VR, and these kids are no less qualified than Steve Harvey, so who am I to judge, pun intended? I got there right as a new case was starting, so I floated my ass to a seat in the gallery and waited for the case to begin. On the upside, this whole thing was organized by kids, which is adorable. And on the downside, it's organized by kids, so it's complete chaos. People were interrupting the court, creating portals to other worlds, which is the closest thing the metaverse has to disturbing the peace. And the only form of crowd control is to vote to have someone kicked from the world. So that happened a lot. Five minutes after arriving at Metacourt, just planning to hang out, so many people were kicked that I was asked to be a member of the jury. Come on, Jarvis. It was very stressful. These kids are very impatient. Go on, go on jury. Go on, jury. You cooperate with this. Come on, jury. I didn't know. I haven't been here before. I didn't know where the jury was. Once I got to the jury, I realized they were already at closing statements. This is closing statements. Oh, no, no more evidence. And I didn't know what was going on 
or what the case was. So I accidentally sentenced someone to 25 years in jail for stealing a dog. 25 years. Yeah. 25 years to life yeah. or just 25 years? There were originally more members of the jury, but they couldn't sit still because they were children or they started playing music over their microphone <laughs> or tried to steal the judge's spot. So I was the sole voting member of the jury. And I just have to say, the criminal justice system was working as intended. I had to leave the court because I was given far too much power. I stopped by Gatsby's during the day just to see how my boys were doing. And Slim, the basketball god, was there, and he'd hit a new high score. Well, I'm at 11.03, so 11.52, so I'm almost there. I can get the four, but after fourth place, look, I need 700 shots to get the third. At night, I decided I'd check out some Saturday night comedy at the comedy club, and to my delight, there were actual adults telling jokes. But to my horror, the jokes were the same ones the kids tell. It seems like the other adults here have been having the same experience I am, where kids are just taking over everything. Why did a chicken cross the road? This woman, uh, who will remain anonymous, was very annoying. <laughs> tell jokes or get off the stage. I know a song about Ohio. No. And she just kept heckling everyone on stage. Boo! I don't like kids. <laughs> Oh, uh, except mom. Hey, little baby. And it takes a lot for me to do this. But when I asked her to please just let people tell their jokes, she told me to shut up and mind my own business. Hey, you um, shut up. Mind your business. Yeah, shut the fuck up, bro. Which is a hell of a thing to say when you are not shutting up nor minding your own business. Are you trying to be funny? Because you're not funny. When she eventually got kicked and the adults could finally tell their jokes, they were just complaining about cancel culture and about how they can't tell their real funny jokes because the mods would get mad at them. So it was awesome. What's the difference between Antarctica and the internet? There are more snowflakes on the internet. <laughs> I went to relax in the conversation pit outside. A group of people had gathered around a fire and were singing songs and playing guitar. It was very sweet until a child ran up and said a slur. <laughs> Fortnite battle pass, I your shit out my ass. Seems to happen a lot. It's finally Sunday and it's my last day in the metaverse. On Sundays, I usually like to just chill out and rest and prep for the week ahead. So I figured I'd do the same thing in the metaverse. After everything I've been through, I think I deserve it. I found a meditation world where someone leads live meditations, which I assume you do while children are screaming in the background, but it was empty today. So as a consolation prize, it led me to a world where I could do my own self-guided meditation, which I prefer anyway. I mean, I use apps for that. When I got to this world, it was just like some tranquil island with a big shrine in the middle of it. And I went up to the shrine to grab a meditation plank from the altar. Then I found a nice spot to float on my butt and I closed my eyes and listened to the sweet, sweet sounds of nature. There weren't really any sounds of nature, but there was a nice lady doing therapist voice that I could relax to. Start by breathing in through your nose, pausing your breath, and slowly breathing out. And then it stopped, which I thought was just like what happens in meditation where they like give you some time to think to yourself and be mindful but actually i just had to keep hitting the play button to keep the meditation As going which is a very distracting way to meditate then i went into the water and for some strange reason my meditation plank started floating away like it had a mind of its own and i was trying to <laughs> i was trying to catch up with it so i could listen to more relaxing sounds but the last thing i did in the metaverse it was inspired by an unlikely source. Remember that heckler woman from yesterday? She had a few wise words before she started interrupting the comics. I don't care. No, not that. It should be again. aching over it all, all the time, just like black magic. Apparently this whole time, there's been a comedy club that doesn't allow kids. So I went to check it out and finally hear some real comedy. I arrived at the black magic club in the evening and there wasn't a single soul there except one. As I turned the corner from the stage, I saw a little area with ball-based games, you know, like always, and there was a single man playing beer pong by himself. Who was this mystery man? Why was he the only person at the Black Magic Club? And how do you play one player beer pong? That is just drinking. I tried introducing myself, but he 
refused to turn his mic on and only communicated with gestures. There was a basketball hoop there too, because of course there was. So I figured I'd keep him company and work on my shooting motion. To my complete and utter shock, this silent mystery man started getting my rebounds and passing me the ball to keep shooting. I felt like Steph Curry warming up for the big game, except I didn't make a single shot. But mystery man didn't care. He was just there to support me. And then it happened. I finally made my first basketball shot the entire week. And my best friend was there to witness it. I've known Silent Mike for 10 minutes and he's already shown me more love and acceptance than all of the metaverse combined. So naturally, since I had made my shot, I passed the ball to Mike. It was his turn now, but he passed it back to me. And I said, no, Mike, it's all you. Then Mike took some shots and we enjoyed our night in silence. We did not speak. <laughs> Eventually, I waved Mike in the metaverse goodbye because I'm never going back in there. This was not fun. What a strange, strange place. There's absolutely no shot this version of the metaverse takes off. I feel like Meta has spent so much money to acquire users that the ones that are there are there by brute force. 99% <laughs> of the worlds are empty at all times, and the ones with people are being overrun by infants. Fortnite Battle Pass. Who aren't even supposed to be in the metaverse, but I'm sure they're counting them in the analytics. Mark Zuckerberg thinks he's sitting pretty right now because what, you, you just get to sit on threads and make jokes about Twitter? No, finish what you started and give us legs. There are some real characters in the metaverse, like Slim, who only plays basketball at the Gatsby bar. That takes dedication and maybe we could all learn something from him. Maybe Slim isn't even real. Maybe he's a metaphor crafted by the metaverse to teach us that hopping around from world to world won't make you happy until you can enjoy the world that's right in front of you, the real world. I can't spend all my time looking at a screen inside of a VR headset. I'm too busy spending all my time looking at a screen outside of a VR headset, like an adult. Oh, and I went to check Slim's high score. He's number two now, Bye bye